Okay, so I'm puffing and panting a little bit. So ignore my heavy breathing, guys. So, if you were to look at my athletes in general, I don't have any of my athletes who actually have any gaps in their back at all. All of my athletes have very complete, thick, round, developed, mature muscle. And that's definitely because of the instillment of my training philosophy and the time that I put into designing their programs. Remember, when I work with my clients, I design a program based around their requirements and needs. Just in the same way, if you guys and girls were looking at supplementation, you really need to put the time and the attention into selecting the correct nutritional requirements when it comes to supplementation in relationship to your body type, your body needs, and what you're trying to attain within your own fitness goals. And that's why at Yamamoto Nutrition we have a full spectrum of highly bioavailable pharmaceutical products throughout our entire line. So it gives you the choice to pick and choose what product fits your body type and what you're looking for. In the same way is when I design my programs for my athletes, I put a lot of time and a lot of attention in to make sure I design a program based around them, where the weaknesses are, where their strengths are, the biomechanics, and I obviously align the program custom to them, each and every one of them. So when it comes to overall back development, it's extremely important that you stay physically and mentally aligned with the exercise. And what does that mean? It basically means that when you perform your exercise, you need to make sure that biomechanically you're in line with the movement. Your movement patterns stay in line with the target areas that you're focusing on. But you also make sure that you get those contractional forces and you concentrate on making sure that you're extracting as much of that stress and load and targeting onto the muscle fibers which are being activated within that exercise. When I perform this exercise, I'm not just pulling and performing a bent over row. I'm making sure that I'm engaging, squeezing and contracting within that back area that I'm working on. That allows me to absorb all that stress and load, put it into large motor uric recruitment and create maximum stimulus whilst I'm performing that exercise. That is what's going to instill and see those positive changes with the overall back thickness and width that you're striving for. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to my final warm up set. This will be my fourth warm up set. So I'm not gonna pick a weight which is challenging me, but I am gonna be picking a weight which is going to create enough engagement for me to be physically challenged a little bit so that when I come on to my working sets that I'm already warm, okay? I'm now gonna use my lifting wraps for the very first time. I didn't need to use those before, but now the weight has gone up. I'm gonna increase. You'll notice my movement patterns stay exactly the same. So I'm gonna go into my first working set now. Now you can use a belt. Um, I'm a big advocator and supporter of using obviously a belt in a lot of exercises. I tend to use a belt quite often when I do some form of rowing exercise. However, this exercise is quite intrusive when it comes to diaphragm engagement in the sense that you can find that when you go into your prefix position, you may find that a belt will sometimes be a little bit intrusive with your breathing. And now you can get used to that. I'm a big advocator, quite often I use one. But I'm gonna be aiming above 12 repetitions with my working set. So I'm gonna leave the belt off for my first set. I'm gonna see how I feel. Um, and then I'll develop and I'll go from there. Remember, I always go into each exercise once I'm fully warmed up with my maximum weight. And your weight is obviously gonna be in relationship to your rep range. So you need to make sure that you put the time and the attention, you're open-minded enough to make sure that you're gonna physically and mentally challenge yourself, but you need to make sure you put the time into deciding and figuring out what weight you're gonna use for your first working set. Because remember, that's where your starting point is. That's what's gonna give you the ability 
to extract that information then to move forward when it comes to the selective choices of weight on your second and third and fourth exercise and working set. So today with our target rep range is going to be anywhere between 8 and 12 repetitions. There's a possibility it may go slightly over 12 on some working sets and slightly under 8 on others. And of course you're going to make those changes when it comes into your forthcoming um, exercise when it comes to your next working set. Remember go in with your heaviest weight at the very beginning of your first working set and then you can gauge your strength off that to make the selective choices whether you go up or down in the repetitions and the weight in relationship to the exercise. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to go on to our second exercise and it's this arsenal piece of equipment. It's very isolated, so it's not a like a conventional lion incline row machine where the pivot point is at the bottom. So it basically allows you to use more weight. With the pivot point being high, mechanically it, it acts as a disadvantage, so the amount of weight that you can use on this is very much dramatically reduced. The amount of stress is dramatically increased. Now if you're an egotistic lifter who likes to lift heavy shit then this exercise is not going to be for you because you're going to have to leave your ego at home because you are not going to be able to use much weight on this. However the exercise and the execution and the stress and load is in a relationship to exactly what you're trying to deliver and get out of an exercise which basically means that you're able to create a huge amount of muscular stimulus from the very beginning of the exercise with a weight which is relatively medium or low in comparison to another piece of equipment like this. So I'm just going to adjust the pad which is at the bottom. So at the moment it's adjustable here. It's down for the tall people and me being a midget. Now I'm going to alter it here. You'll notice pivot point is high as opposed to being low. So mechanically it puts you in a disadvantage. I'm going to leave the handles here which is pretty much uh, neutral so you these are adjustable as well guys they come in or out but I'm actually going to come into a mutual stance as far as my hand placement. When I perform this exercise you'll note, notice as well I'm pretty neutral. I don't put my hands into this position I'm pretty neutral keep my torso in line with the movement. Now you'll notice when I perform this I'm going to hyper row so I don't just focus on pulling and extracting and pulling through my scapular engagement and my upper trap area. And remember your trapezic area of your back where the aerial origins of the attachment area is very large. Your trap are actually very high. They obviously start high within your shoulder blades, obviously going into your neck and they come down right in the middle of your vertebrae, pretty low about three quarters of the way down. So when I do this hyper roll on this, I'm going to get a lot of stimulus in all areas of my back. And I'm creating that stimulus by obviously changing my movement pattern. I'm only going to be putting one plate aside on this, and this is fucking heavy, one plate aside. So if you don't have this piece of equipment, it's okay. You can do exactly the same exercise on an incline bench and use dumbbells. You can still hyper row, one of my favorite exercises, dumbbell hyper row. I won't do that today, I don't need to, because obviously we started with bent over dumbbell row, now coming on to this incline hyper row machine. Then I'm going to go on to my next exercise. We're going to be doing four working sets on here, okay? I'm going to use a belt for this.
Okay, so when I do my next set, we'll make sure that you guys and girls can see a side profile area. So what you'll notice is that when I perform this exercise, I'm hyper rowing at the same time. So I'm not just pulling and gauging through my upper rhomboid scapular area. I'm getting a really good engagement in my lower back area as well because I'm hyper rowing at the same time. Hyper row is not going to be dis dis disconnecting my upper or mid point of my back at any point. No, it's just engaging my lower half at the same time. So it allows me to target three core areas of my back within the same movement. Okay. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna go into my third and final exercise. So by the time I finish this workout, we've done three different exercises. Rep range, eight to 12. The eccentric's about two seconds. So it's a week one C workout today. So A, the eccentric normally five seconds. B, roughly about three seconds. And C is roughly two seconds. So this next exercise is gonna be a close grip, low pulley row. Again, this is a great mass builder. I don't personally feel that this exercise is gonna target one specific area. For me, this is very much a three dimensional exercise. So I like close grip exercises because personally, I feel that close grip exercises are gonna build more width, yes, width than wide um, position exercises. Wide position exercises, when you, especially when you're doing an overhead pull down, is very intrusive in scapula, okay? You'll find that your shoulder blades feel very awkward. To me, I do not get the same kind of placement as far as stress being delivered to my outer lat attachment as I do with close grip. So close grip, to me, is pretty much the benchmark exercise that I tend to choose, uh, choose with a lot of my exercise selection for all of my athletes. It doesn't make any difference which one it is tends to be medium or close grip. You'll never see me writing wide grip into any of my back workouts. And if you look at all of my athletes, you'll notice that they've got very 3D back development. So when I perform this exercise, I'm gonna stretch my lat out, but very slightly. I'm not gonna overstretch, so I'm not gonna put my lower back in a vulnerable position. And then gonna power and pull, and pull directly down into my lower abdominal area, okay? To my binnacle area. As I pull and engage, into my lower abdominal area. I'm gonna throw my chest forward. So I stretch, throw. You'll notice I'm arching and throwing my chest forward. I'm not just rowing here, okay? I'm throwing in, I'm throwing in. This allows me to get more contractional forces taking place, place and create more muscle stimulus through the latter, lower and midpoint of my lateral dorsal area. And great instillment also within my mid-range of my back as well. It's gonna get my back rest back. Gonna go in with my heaviest weight first. You'll notice when I rest pause, I'll rest pause on this exercise lying back. So I'll take my rest when I need to. So you'll see me in engaging with my rest pause. Probably rest pause one or two times at the most when performing rep ranges anywhere between eight and 12. When I perform exercises which are anywhere between 14 and 18, like a week two, probably, 
engage rest pause maybe three or four times and then when I do high rep training I could engage anywhere between four and six or eight times rest pause okay so last exercise now if I went into this exercise at the very beginning of my back back workout then of course I'm going to be stronger finishing on this exercise I'm obviously going to be weaker as opposed to if I did this first but the amount of stress and load is still going to be the same because I've obviously pre-fatigued myself on other exercises first the most important thing on this is staying engaged staying, it's keeping your core tight so you're obviously you're eliminating your back being engaged at the bottom you don't want to be bringing your lower back into play and being vulnerable you'll notice I stretch my lap but I don't overstretch so I'm not gonna throw my lower back out and roll my back over when I rest pause I lie back on my arms straight okay Neil come on never gets easier because as you become stronger you physically challenge yourself more so you're always going to be in an environment of deficit what does de deficit mean challenging the fuck out of yourself but there's no greater feeling than feeling yourself becoming stronger so whether it's neurologically whether it's mentally whether it's physically whether you feel that you're starting to be able to mentally sustain more pain and resistance through a certain rep range especially when it comes to week three or week two exercises because there's a lot of lactic acid buildup and a lot of that training stimulus is mental as well because it's a different type of training compared to aerobic you know aerobic and anaerobic exercise is very different how it impacts you on a physical and a mental aspect of things This workout today is extremely productive for me. I find that I get really good engagement on all the exercises. Yes, that's because mentally and physically I'm in line. And um, every one of these exercises that I chose today are extremely mentally taxing. I see a lot of people choose exercises because they're able to stay in their comfort zone. They don't want to be stepping out of an environment which challenges them. You have to be out of that environment. Um, there's probably only two exercises that I don't tend to put a lot in as far as my athletes and that's rack pulls and deadlifts. Now I'm not saying that there isn't a place for rack pulls and deadlifts. They're just two exercises that I don't tend to do a lot with my athletes because I tend to find that the development is extremely complete and I don't want to put them in environments where I feel that um, are more vulnerable. That being said, even the most vulnerable exercises, deadlift, bench press, squats for instance, these exercises have obviously a percentage of risk but if you perform the exercises correctly which you should be then of course the risk of injury is far far greater and don't think for one minute you're only gonna increase the chances of injury by those three exercises. You can get injured by, on, on exercises or with weight or selective choice in movement patterns you not necessarily realize you are but sometimes those injuries take place because you're not training in a logical format so you create weaknesses in certain areas and strengths and then when obviously when you create imbalances your body is more likely to pick up an injury as opposed to be imbalanced and when you look at three you know Y3T it's a three-dimensional training program it's designed to make sure you target different areas and different muscle fiber stimulates so to me it's a very very balanced training stimulus with exceptional properties to build muscle tissue and sustain longevity as well as an athlete
okay so that's it guys hope you've enjoyed make sure you keep coming on to the Yamamoto Nutrition website where also we're going to be giving you some great information from a nutrition point of view training stimulus motivation accountability diet etc today just smashed up a week one y3t c workout with the eccentric was roughly two seconds three different exercises a total of 12 working sets in total first exercise bent over dumbbell row rep range eight to 12 repetitions obviously you're trying to stay within that rep range you may go slightly over you may go slightly under you'll need to make the necessary changes to the weight and the poundages in relationship to the rep range that you've just done within that working set then we went on to our second exercise which is a very isolated compound movement it was a lion incline machine low pivot point row um, i've already spoken about that exercise it's a nasty piece of equipment extremely challenging on a physical and mental aspect of things a great, th great three-dimensional exercise you'll notice as i spoke about i hyper row so i find that i get a full engagement throughout all of my back and not just target my rhomboid scapula outer lat attachment area three-dimensional and then i finished off with one of my favorite exercises behind me which is a close grip low pulley row spoke about obviously how you perform how you engage how to rest pause again rep range 8 to 12 repetitions anyway i hope you enjoyed the video obviously keep checking out yamamoto nutrition i'm going to keep feeding you guys and girls some great educational content from a training tip training stimulus how to create a training program which is based around your personal goals keep checking out obviously our supplement requirements in relationship to your training style i'll see you guys and girls very soon on behalf of myself and yamo to nutrition catch you guys very soon let's make 2019 a great year